ourselves moving, we'll allow the feet to come underneath the hips and we'll allow the toes to point forwards. And let's allow the eyes to close if you feel comfortable enough to allow the eyes to close. And we'll allow our breath to come and go nice and gently. And as we gently settle ourselves in, we'll allow our weight to track gently over the front of our feet. And then tracking the weight into the back of the feet. And we'll take it through those two extremes, tracking gently forwards and gently back. And then we'll find that place where our weight's right in the centre of the two feet. And we'll allow ourselves to soften into the ankles and into the knees. And then we'll allow ourselves to focus in on the pelvis. So imagining the pelvis is a bucket of water filled to the top, we'll gently tip a little bit of water out of the front of the bucket. And we'll tip a little bit of water out of the back of the bucket. And we'll take it through those two extremes. And then we'll find that place where it feels as though that bucket of water is nice and level, not tipping out the front or out the back. And when we find that place, we'll allow ourselves to lengthen really nice and tall through the spine. Lengthening up nice and tall. Let's allow ourselves to roll the shoulders, lifting the shoulders and we'll roll them back and down. And again, the shoulders can lift and we'll roll back and down. Taking two more like that. And last one, shoulders ease towards one another and sink down towards the tailbone. And as we glide the shoulder blades towards the tailbone, we're going to draw the muscles from the tailbone to the pubic bone in and gently up. So we've got that sense of real connection through the pelvic floor. Take a nice deep breath for me and allow the right arm to float forwards and up. Breathing in as the arm floats back down and we change over to the other side. Lovely. Floating gently down and again, right arm floats forward to up. Breathing in as we float the arm back down, changing over to the other side. Lovely. So we'll change sides each time and as one arm floats down, the other one lifts up. Lovely. And this time, as we allow the right arm to float forwards and up, we'll take a little side bend up and over to the right side. And then coming through the centre, changing over to the other side. Up and over. Coming through the centre, changing over with the arms, up and over to the side. Good, let's keep that going. And we'll just think about as we reach with one finger up, we are reaching with the other finger down. And again, changing over sides, reaching in the opposite direction. Lovely. Once more on each side. Good. And bringing the arm back down by our side. Let's just work into the neck. So we'll allow the head to gently rotate round to the right side. Coming back to the centre and rotating round to the second side. Coming back into the centre and rotating round. And then as we come back to the centre, let's allow the head to gently dip down to the right side. And coming into the centre, up and over to the opposite side. And again, up and over to the right side. And up and over to the second side. Lovely. And then as we come through to the centre, we'll allow the chin to tuck towards the chest. Let the head become heavy and we'll start to roll down through the spine, coming down through the vertebrae bit by bit. Nice deep breath at the bottom and then breathing out as we roll back up through the spine. Lifting the shoulders, roll the shoulders back and down and we'll allow both the arms to float forwards and up. 
breathing in as the arms float back down and again we'll release through the top of the head rolling down through the spine coming down through the vertebrae bit by bit piece by piece nice deep breath there and breathing out as we roll back up through the spine lifting the shoulders roll the shoulders back and down both arms float forwards and up and breathing in as the arms float back down once again rolling down through the spine and rolling up to standing lifting the shoulders roll the shoulders back and down let's allow both arms to float forwards and up and we'll allow the elbows to pull down we'll just bring the elbows wide of the shoulders Take a nice deep breath, pelvis stays still, and we allow the rib cage to rotate round. Breathing in as we return back to the centre, and then rotating round to the opposite side. And again. So as we do that, we've got the pelvis nice and still, so the pelvis isn't coming with us, and we've just got a little bit of softness in the knees. Let's take that once more on each side. And as we come into the centre, we'll cut the space with our hands, let those shoulders glide down the back and elbows nice and tight as we allow the arms to open out. Lovely. We'll keep that going. A little squeeze in through the tummy, arms gently open out, lifted through the pelvic floor. And let's allow this next one to let the right arm come around and above the head and circling around changing to the other side around and above the head and circling back around one more on each side lovely last one left and then we'll press the hands away from us heel of the hand presses away gently circling the arms taking three two strong through the core change direction back the other way three two lovely and again as we do that we drop the shoulders down the back and changing direction lovely and releasing there giving the arms a good shake out lovely let's take a little bit of balance work from there Take a deep breath in, as we breathe out, we'll allow the right foot to lift away from the floor. And then we'll float the foot back down and change over to the other side. That's lovely, good. And floating the feet down. Good, changing over, let's allow that leg to open out to the side. And coming back to the center, floating back down, changing over to the other side. Knee opens out to the side, coming back into the center, and draw the leg back down. So if you're feeling like you want a little bit of extra challenge, we'll let the knee open out to the side, the leg can come back in, and then if we can, we'll try and keep the knee as still as we can, and we'll stretch the leg forwards, and drawing the leg back in, and um, changing over to the other side. The knee opens out to the side, coming back to the center, stretch the leg away, and draw that leg back in and float back down. We can add the arms, here they are. So we're gonna do exactly as we did before, elbows open, no, hands open, elbows stay tucked in. And then as you stretch the leg away, the right arm can circle around the head and then we'll come back in. Let's take a little rise to change to the other side. And we lift. Knee opens out to the side, elbows open out, and uh, knee comes back in. As you stretch the leg, we'll circle the arm around, and coming back in, well done, and take a rise. Let's try that once again on each side, seeing if we can become a bit more comfortable with it. Elbows are tight, shoulders squeeze in together. We draw the leg back in, and as the leg extends, we can circle the arm around. 
So it's optional, you don't have to stretch the leg out in front of you and you don't have to circle the arm above your head. You can do one or the other if you prefer. Last side, knee opens out to the side. Drawing that leg back in, stretching the leg away as the arm circles around. And come on back, floating gently down. Lovely. Let's just take a couple of lunges forwards then. So we've got that nice lift through the leg. We're going to take a big step forwards and sinking down. Good. As we bring the weight back, we'll catch and floating down. Good. Other side, big step forwards and sinking low, bringing it back, catch. Lovely, once again on each side we lift, big step forwards, sinking down and transfer back. Lovely, one more on the second side, big step forwards, sinking low and we transfer back. Nice catch, and <laughs> well done, give it a little shake up. Lovely. So from there, we'll take a deep breath in, we'll take a roll down through the spine, bring ourselves onto hands and knees. Taking a breath, releasing through the top of the head, rolling gently down through the spine. And letting the hands come underneath the shoulders, allowing the knees to come underneath the hips. Good. Now, once we're there, we'll take a nice squeeze in through the tummy. Let's allow ourselves to take a little cat stretch to get into this movement. So we'll push the back up into the sky, let the head drop between the arms, tailbone points down, and then we'll lengthen out there. And again, we push the back up, taking a nice tight squeeze in the tummy, and we'll lengthen away from there. So keep that going for me. If you find it difficult to be on your knees, you can always lie on your front and then we'll, in a moment, we'll find some exercises that work for lying on your front. But if you're happy on hands and knees, this is marvellous. So last one. And then from here, we'll take our thread in the needle. So we'll allow the shoulders to glide down the back. We'll take a nice deep breath. One hand lifts and we feed the hand through the gap between the hand and the knee. Breathing in as we return. So if I have people in the class that um, find this too much on the wrist, sometimes we'll work on our elbows. That might work for you. From there, if you want to, you can start to allow that arm to lift a little and take a little bit of a rotation. Breathing in as we draw the arm back. And again on the other side, we lift up and open. And threading through. Good. Keep it going for me. Lovely. Nice. Good. Finishing off there, let's take our swimming exercise. Um, so we'll start off in this base position. We've got that strength through the core. We've got the tailbone stretching away. Let's take a deep breath in and we'll allow ourselves to stretch the right leg away from us, keeping the hips nice and still, breathing in as the leg returns. Change it over to the other side, strength through the core, lengthening the leg away, breathing in as we draw the leg back in. Now if you want to from here, opposite arm to leg extends away. We breathe in as the arm and the leg return. Changing over to the opposite side, opposite arm to leg extend away. Breath in as the arm and the leg return. And then we'll add that little side leg lift. So we stretch the leg and the arm away, draw the arm and the leg back in, and then the knee opens out to the side. Breathing in as we draw the leg back in. Changing to the other side, we lift and lengthen both the leg and the arm. Drawing the leg and the arm in, the knee opens out to the side. And drawing the arm and the leg back in. Keeping that going for me. Now if we want to, we can add that little rotation. So we can add in our thread in the needle as we draw the leg back in. 
So the leg and the arm extend away, hips stay nice and level and still. We'll draw that leg in, knee opens out to the side and the elbow can open out to the side. Draw in the leg in and then keep the arm feeding through. Good. And then if you're feeling really adventurous there, you stretch the arm and the leg away. Draw the arm and the leg in, knee and elbow open out to the side. Draw it in as you feed the arm through, just stretch that leg away from you. And draw him back in. Once again on the other side. So if you want to, you can keep that knee lifted. And allow it to just stretch behind you as you feed the arm through. And just allow yourself to sit back onto your heels from there, lengthen the arms out in front of you, rest your forehead and breathe. And then let's allow ourselves to come onto our fronts. That's it, lovely. So when we're there, we'll allow the nose to hover just an inch away from the floor. We'll let the elbows go wide. We'll squeeze in through the tummy, head extends out the way and the shoulders can glide gently down the back. We've got that nice tight squeeze in through the tummy. Take a deep breath for me there, shoulders glide down the back, head extends out and away. And we breathe in as we lift up. And floating gently back down. Good, keep that going for me. So again, if you find uh, in this position, if you find it difficult to be working on the lying position, you can do this from hands and knees. So we we'll allow the breastbone to lift forwards and out. And breathing in as we come back. Uh, just being mindful that you're not dropping and collapsing into the lower back, that you've got that sense of being really lengthened through the torso there and strengthening through the lower back. Hi Diane, yay! Nice to see you. Finishing off the one that you're doing and then we'll allow ourselves to roll onto one side. I'm going to assume you're all rolling onto your left side but you can do whichever works well for you depending on where your camera is. So we'll allow the head to rest down onto that bottom arm. Shoulders are on top of one another and the hips are on top of one another. We'll take a nice deep breath there. And as we breathe out, we're going to stretch both the legs away from us. That's it, good. So we've got both legs lifted and extended. Head is resting down. Shoulders are on top of one another. And let's see if we can allow the top arm to lift off and rest by our side. We'll allow both the legs to stretch out and away. Take a nice deep breath and then we'll gently circle the top leg. Breathing out for half the circle, breathing in to complete the circle. Let's take five in one direction and five in the other direction. I'll be taking my cue from you because I wandered off and had a little drink. When you've finished off those five in both directions, allow the legs to come to stillness. Take a breath, the top leg's going to reach up and over and dip down in front. And then we'll lift up and dip down behind. Good, and again lifting up, dip down in front, lifting up, touch down behind. Two more like that. Good. And floating the legs down, we'll soften in. So with the hips nice and stable and still, we'll tip the top hip gently forwards and we'll connect in through the tummy. Taking a deep breath, we'll allow that top knee to gently lift and lower and we lift and lower good and 
three and two. And then let's glue the knees together and we'll allow both the feet to lift. Gently lower. We lift and lower. Lovely. And then we'll hold the feet up there and allow the top knee to lift and lower. Yes, Rachel, like it. And we lift and lower. Lovely. If you want to add the extension through the leg, we can do. We'll lift the toe, draw the toe back down and bring the knee back in. And again, we lift the knee, extend the toe. The extra extension is optional but keeping this bottom foot lifted is not optional. The last one. And let's float the legs down. And we'll just take a little cycle through just to stretch it in sort of a different range of movement. So a cycle all the way around. Let's take three in one direction and three in the other direction. So we're squeezing in through the tummy, gently circle, and then we'll reverse the cycle. Good. And then we'll take hold of that foot and we'll see if we can stretch the knee away from us. Bringing the foot in close to the bottom and then just looking to level the knee off so that the knee isn't lifting up for the sky. <clears throat> Sometimes it st sort of starts up there. And then we bring it down and it might be forwards of the body a little bit and we'll see if we can ease out through the hip, through the thigh and get that sense of length and stretch down the front of the thigh. One more breath here, just check that your top shoulder is releasing down so you've got a sense that that's really relaxing down and away. Good. And releasing there, bringing the legs on top of one another. Let's take opening up like a book. <clears throat> so if you want to pop a cushion under your head, now's a good chance to do that. We'll take a nice deep breath there and we'll start to take our opening up like a book. So the top arm gently opens and the eyes are fixed on the hand. And then we'll breathe in as we draw the arm back in. Now, Keeping the fingertips connected to the floor, if you want to, you can alternate this with a little semicircle around the head. So I call it the chalk circles. I don't think I made that up. I think that it is called that. Let's open up like a book. So if you imagine then that you've got a piece of chalk in this top hand and you're just uh, drawing a little semicircle around your head on the floor and draw them back in. Let's do that sequence once more. So it should feel quite um, a long stretch down the chest as well as you take that chalk circle. Good. So finishing off where you are, I just want you to flip over to the other side. So that might mean sitting up and putting your head over to the other side, or it might mean you just roll away from me. Um, you know what you're doing. If you want to just roll in the opposite direction, means do. Let's allow that bottom arm to be really nice and long. Head rests on the arm. Hips are on top of one another, shoulders are on top of one another. We take a nice deep breath and then as we breathe out we'll stretch and extend the legs away from us, fully reaching the legs out and away. Good. And then taking those circles again with the top leg. Lovely. Keeping that going for me. Good. So if you find that any strain in the lower back by all means drop the bottom leg but keep the top leg lifted if you need to hold onto the floor it's fine but if you can allow the hand to lift off that's a marvelous thing also
and keeping those legs extending and reaching, top toe dips down just in front, we lift up and dip down behind, we lift up, dip down in front and dipping down behind, good, we've got two more like that, really nice and stable through the hips if we can. Lovely. And finishing off there, float the legs down, soften in through the knees. And then with that top hip tipping slightly forwards, so the top hip is um, on a slight angle, we'll take a deep breath and we'll allow that top knee to gently lift and lower. Keeping that nice squeeze in the tummy, we lift and lower. Good. Keeping that going for me. And then gluing those knees together will allow both feet to lift, gently lower, and we lift, and lower, good. Hold it up there for me, let that top knee lift, and gently lower, good, go for it Rachel, yeah, lovely. And then if you want to, this next time we can start to extend the leg out and away. Loving it, good. Extend the leg away and drawing the leg back in. I'm not sure my hip's supposed to click quite that loudly on that exercise. But I'm sure I'll feel much better for it. Good, let's make this one our last one. And softening down, taking that circle with the top foot. So we'll push the foot forwards. Come on back, give it a little squeeze in the buttock as you come on round. And change in the direction of the circle. Circling back the other way. And releasing the legs down, seeing if we can take hold of that top foot. Good, allowing the knee to stretch away from you. Let the shoulder really glide down the back. So as the knee stretches away, we're just checking that it hasn't lifted up, but it's now in line with our knee. And we've got that sense of the knee trying to come into line with the torso. So it's not um, coming forwards of the body, but gently easing in line with the torso, maybe a little bit behind us. As it pulls back behind us, we want to scoop in through the tummy and just tip the tailbone slightly forward. So we, um, we're really strong through the core, really long through the lower back, and that will intensify that stretch into the quad. And release in there. So if you want to, now's your time to find a cushion if there's one to hand. And again, we'll take that opening up like a book. And if you want to, you can combine that with your chalk circles. Drawing the arm gently back. And then circling the arm above the head and all the way around. And drawing the arm back in exactly the same way that it came. So we lift the arm up, watch the hand as it opens. And then breathe in as the arm returns. Keeping those fingers connected to the floor, if you want to add in the chalk circles. Circling gently around, eyes stay fixed on the hand as it comes behind you. Good, just one more like that, that combination. And when you finish off there, we'll come onto our backs. Yeah, that's it, lovely. 
So coming onto your back, we, you might want to get rid of the cushion. If you find that your um, your lower back is quite um, tight across the front of the chest, you might find it quite hard to lay in this position, in which case a cushion might be quite comfortable. Otherwise, um, you might want to get rid of the cushion and just allow your head to come on down and check that you've got a sense of length through the lower back. So once we're there, we're going to allow ourselves to just take a moment to really zone in on the pelvis. Let's let the pelvis become really nice and weighty into the floor. And let's start by imagining that the pelvis is a bowl of water. We're going to tip a little bit of water over the sides of the hip bones. <clears throat> And then we'll bring ourselves back into the centre and we'll let the water swish into the belly button. And then we'll tip the pelvis and we'll swish some water over the pubic bone. So we'll take it through those two extremes. And we'll find that place where hip bone and pubic bone come to level with one another. And when we find that there, we'll let the arms rest down by our side. And we're going to squeeze in through the tummy and we're going to let the shoulders glide down the back. So we'll take a nice deep breath in and as we breathe out, we'll allow the right leg to slide away from us. Breathing in as the leg returns. And then we'll slide the opposite leg away from us. Breath in as the leg returns. Lovely. So we're changing legs each time. And as we do, let's allow the opposite arm to lengthen up and over the head. And we'll breathe in as the arm returns. Opposite arm to leg extends away. <clears throat> Breathing in as the arm and the leg returns. Now, adding in our little knee opener from here. So we can allow the knee to gently open out to the side. And then we'll draw that leg back in. Slide in the leg and the arm away. As we breathe in, the arm and the leg return, and then that same knee opens out to the side. So if you want to add a little lift to that leg, it can lengthen away and just hover an inch or so away from the floor. As the leg draws in, the knee hovers above the hip socket, and then the knee opens out to the side, really focusing in on not letting those hips um, tip. And then we float the foot down and we change over to the other side. Opposite arm and leg extend away. Keeping that leg lifted will allow the knee to lift to hover above the hip socket, keeping the hips nice and stable and still we let the knee open out to the side. Breathing in as we draw the leg back in and floating back down. Lovely. So if you want to add the arms to that um, knee opening, we can allow the arms to lengthen up towards the sky. And then we'll allow the knee to open out to the side as the opposite arm opens out. And then if you feel ready to, as we float the foot down, we'll take a little abdominal curl up and we'll breathe in as we float back down. Opposite arm, the leg extends away. Breath in as the leg and the arms, the arms don't lengthen up for the sky. Knee opens out to the side. As you float that leg back down, we'll take that little abdominal curl up and softening down. So we can do this same com combination with the two-legged hand position if you want to. I'm just going to show you what that looks like. We've got imprinted spine if we're working with two legs lifted. If you know that the two-legged hand position doesn't really work for you and your spine, then stick with the combination with the one foot resting on the floor. One more on each side. And then we're going to bring ourselves into our shoulder bridge at the end of this combination. So we'll allow the arms to rest down by our sides when we get there. We'll allow both feet to be grounded. 
and I want the feet to be reasonably close to the bottom as we start to explore into our shoulder bridge combination here. We'll let the arms rest down by our sides and you might want to take a moment to just let the head gently rock from side to side if you've got any tension built up through the neck. And then we'll bring the head into the centre and we'll tuck the chin in slightly. So from there, we're going to take our roll in through the spine. We'll take a deep breath, we'll let the lower back press into the floor, we'll tip the tailbone up and we'll start to peel the spine away from the ground. And we'll go until knees, hips and shoulders come into line with one another. Take a deep breath there. And then we're breathing out as we roll back down through the spine. And returning back to neutral. If you feel you want to, just take a little abdominal curl up from there. And breathing in as we float back down. So again, we'll roll up through the spine. This time we'll add the arms in. So the arms can lift up towards the sky. They can either stay there as you float the vertebrae back down or you can leave, bring the arms all the way over the head and then float those vertebrae back down one by one. We press the lower back into the floor and we allow the pelvis to return back to neutral as the arms come back by our side and we take that little abdominal curl up. Breathing in as we float back down. So we'll keep that going, pressing the lower back into the floor, tipping the tailbone up, peeling the spine away. Now if you want to, we can add our little leg lift at the end here. So we've got ourselves lifted into this shoulder bridge position. Before we add the arms in, we'll just allow one leg to lift and then we'll float that leg down and we'll change over to the other side. And floating that foot down. And then we'll allow the arms to lift up towards the sky or all the way over the head. And then we'll float the vertebrae back down one by one. Pressing the lower back into the floor and allowing ourselves to return back to neutral. And adding that little abdominal curl up if you feel you can do. And then we'll breathe in as we float back down. And let's keep that going. So this time, when we get to the top of our shoulder bridge, we're going to add those little leg lifts in. Um, let's see if we can allow the leg to stretch all the way up towards the sky. Now, as we take that exercise, I want our focus to be on keeping the hips really nice and still. So you might find that the pelvis starts to drop a little. We want to see if we can avoid that, keeping the pelvis nice and high. Arms lift up towards the sky or all the way over the head. And we're floating the vertebrae back down one by one. Start to notice if there's any little areas that are a bit stiff, a little bit sticky, they don't want to move independently. And give those areas some extra breath and some extra time. Breathe it in as you float back down. And once again. This time, let's take a little leg circle. So we get to the... Um, top of our shoulder bridge and we've got a nice soft long line between the rib cage and the pelvis. Yeah, lovely. We'll stretch the leg up towards the sky and then just a little circle as if you're drawing a circle on the ceiling. Floating that leg down, changing over to the other side, stretching the leg up, circle the leg around and floating the leg back down, bringing the arms up towards the sky all the way over the head. And floating back down through the vertebrae, coming down bit by bit. Pressing the lower back into the floor and returning back to neutral as the arms come back by your side. Just taking one more like that in your own time. Taking whichever option works for you, whichever's um, the most appealing for you. If we can add that leg lift in with the circle, that's a marvellous thing. If you're getting there and as soon as you start to lift the foot, it starts to cramp into the hamstrings, then leave the leg lifts out um, and allow yourself to take some little bottom squeezes instead. We need to strengthen up the bottom if we're finding the hamstrings are not cooperating. 
When we've finished off there, we take that little abdominal curl up and we'll maintain our neutral position and allow the arms to lengthen up towards the sky and we'll allow those shoulders to glide down the back. Take a nice deep breath for me here. Let the rib cage descend down towards the floor and then we'll allow the arms to gently circle. So we'll look to keep the shoulders sinking down into the ground as we circle the arms. Breathing out for half the circle, breathing in to complete the circle. Lovely. Keeping that going for me. Now, if you fancy it, as the leg arm opens, the leg slides away. Breathing in as the leg returns. And then as you take your other circle, the next circle, the opposite leg stretches away and then we complete the circle as the leg draws back in. So we'll keep those alternating sides. If anybody wants to do this in the 100 position, you can do. You can do it with the two legs lifted if you want. So you could do it that you stretch the leg away with that little lift. Or you could do it that both legs are lifted and you've got the back imprinted into the floor. Good. If you fancy it, we'll take a little abdominal curl up. So as we bring the arms back by our side, the knee comes in, we'll curl up. And then as we float the head back down, we can bring the arms back up to the sky. So we circle the arms away, leg stretches away, curling up as the knee returns back in. And then we float the foot back down. And you can do the same thing if you've got both legs lifted in the 100 position. Let's take one more on each side. And then we'll bring the knees in towards the chest and we'll give them a good hug. And when we've got those knees hugged in, we'll just allow the head to gently roll from side to side. Releasing the tension through the neck. And then we'll allow ourselves to keep hold of the left leg and we'll slide the right leg away from us, gliding the leg away. Taking a nice sense of stretch into the hip flexor there, the back presses into the ground. Nice and deep with the breath. And then we'll change over to the other side, drawing that leg in, allow the opposite leg to rest down onto the floor and slide that leg away from you. We'll let the back press into the floor. So we'll allow the left foot to come on in, we'll allow the right leg to rest onto the floor. And we'll allow the pelvis to come to a nice neutral position once again, hip bone and pubic bone are level. We'll squeeze in through the tummy, let there be that softness in the rib cage, and then we'll allow the right knee to lift to hover above the hip socket. So with that natural curve in the lower back, we'll gently circle the right thigh bone, breathing out for half the circle, breathing in to complete the circle. We'll take five in one direction, and then we'll change that to the opposite direction. So change in direction of the leg if you haven't already. Good. And then hold it for me there with the knee just hovering above the hip socket. Let's see if we can keep the knee nice and still and we'll look to stretch the leg and then draw that leg back in. So we're using that squeeze in the tummy to keep the leg really nice and stable. So it's the same exercise really as the one that we were doing when we were standing, where we were trying to stretch our leg out in front of us. 
This time, let's allow the leg to stretch up and we'll see how much of an extension we can find through the leg. And then we'll take those circles once again. So we'll take three circles in one direction. Notice now you've got a longer lever, the leg's longer. It's harder to keep that back in neutral position. Let's change the direction of the circle. Keep the squeeze in the tummy. And release in there. Let's keep that leg in exactly the angle that it's in, rib cage sinking down to the floor. And then we'll take a breath and we'll allow the right toe to start to dip down as if we were trying to touch the floor with the foot. And then we'll allow the leg to lift back up. Good. Keep that going for me. Natural curve in the lower back. So the back's not going to press down into the ground. And if you need to bend the knee, do. But if you can keep it at that nice long angle, that's a marvellous thing also. Good. Finishing off there. Take hold of that right leg. Press the lower back into the floor. And we'll take that into a nice hamstring stretch. Nice and deep with the breath. Yeah, that's a good idea. If you've got a band, feel free to wrap the band around your foot. <sighs> While we're here, let's allow ourselves to really release the shoulders down into the ground and we'll allow the head to rest down, let the chin tuck in so we're not um, overextending through the neck. And then this foot that's lengthening up towards the sky, let's take a little circle with that foot. Foot. So we'll circle three in one direction and then we'll take three little circles in the opposite direction. So it's working into the ankle there. And then hold that for me there. Take that leg gently across the midline of the body and then gently open out to the side. And again, cross the midline of the body and gently out to the side. Last one there. And then we'll allow that right foot to rest down onto the floor. Now, let's allow ourselves to return back to neutral spine and we're going to take that full combination again. So hip bone and pubic bone are level, rib cage rests down into the floor. Take in a deep breath for me there. We'll allow the left knee to lift to hover above the hip socket. Hips are nice and level with one another. We're gently circling. So we'll take five in one direction and five in the other direction. Really nice and stable through the core. Natural curve in the lower back. Pelvis is nice and level. Good. Changing direction if you haven't already. And then allowing that knee to hover above the hip socket. Taking a breath, stretch the right toe up towards the sky. Oh, this is the left foot, sorry. Bending through the knee. So seeing if we can keep that knee nice and still and the toe stretches up for the sky. And then we bend at the knee, good. So notice if that um, knee starts to move further away from you. See if you can keep it hovering above the hip socket. <clears throat> so we'll get to that place where we feel as though we're as extended through the knee as we can do. And then we'll take our circles. We'll do three in each direction. Three still in neutral spine, two, and one change in the direction of the circle, three, two, one, hold it there for me. With that neutral spine position, we're allowing that leg to lower towards the floor, hips are staying really level, natural curve in the lower back, squeezing in through the tummy and we lift, and then we lower down, rib cage stays sinking into the floor, Lift on up. And when you've done five like that, we're going to hug the leg um, 
with it fully extended and take that hamstring stretch. So we'll take hold of the leg and allow the lower back to press into the floor as you find that full hamstring stretch. And again, if you've got a band and you want to use it, feel free to wrap the band around your foot, easing that leg in close to you. <sighs> nice and gentle with the breath. Lovely. And we'll see if with each breath we can start to ease a little bit deeper into the stretch. Maybe the leg will start to give a little more as we start to allow ourselves to be really nice and heavy into the ground. Maybe just rolling that head from side to side, checking you're not holding any tension through the neck. And then let's gently circle that foot, giving it a nice bit of movement into the ankle. Good, and then we'll change the direction of that circle. Nice smooth action there, lovely. And then the leg just comes a little way across the midline of the body, seeing if we can get a stretch on the outside of the leg. And then gently out to the side. And again, gently coming across the body. And out to the side. Good, just one more like that. And then bringing the legs in, give them a good hug. And then we're gonna peel the head off the floor. We're gonna bring the head close to the knees and we'll start to rock gently forwards and backwards. Now, if you know this isn't a position that um, your back enjoys, feel free to um, come onto your side, push down on your hands and come up to a seated position in a way that works better for you. Otherwise, let's take three more to pin ourselves up to sitting. Two, last one, and we're up. Marvellous. So, let's allow those feet to be just hip distance apart. We'll allow the knees to bend, we'll allow the hands to come around the backs of the thighs. Lengthening nice and tall with the shoulders gliding down the back. Take a nice deep breath for me here. As you breathe out, you're going to squeeze in through the tummy, tilt the tailbone under and curve into the lower back. And then we're going to lengthen up nice and tall as we come back up to sitting. Good. So we're holding onto the thighs, but we don't need to grip on tightly. We can allow the arms to lengthen out in front of us. And tucking the tailbone under, curving gently through the spine, lengthening up nice and tall. And again, tucking the tailbone under, curving through the lower back. Lovely. So we'll keep that going. If there's any particular concerns in the back, we'll just make it really small. If you feel ready to, one leg lifts. And we keep the knees in line with one another as we roll down and then as we lift on up and then we change over to the other side, curving in through the lower back and then lengthening up nice and tall, changing legs again, curving gently down, breathing in as we come back up, last one. Now guess where we're going with this? Yeah, both legs lifted. Shall we try it out? Curling down, curling up. I know, you love that one, right? Floating the legs down, let's allow the knees to go out to the sides and gently releasing. Just let yourself release into those hips there. And releasing for me there, just coming onto your knees. 
We will just take a little hip flexor stretch because that might have um, caught into those hip flexors a little. Big step forwards with the right leg and then just easing gently forwards. Yeah, nice. And drawing back. Good. Changing over to the other side. Big step forwards and then easing gently forwards. And drawing the leg back. Lovely. We'll tuck the toes under from there and allow ourselves to roll gently up to standing. Pressing the heels into the ground, let the head be nice and heavy and we'll roll gently up through the spine. Head comes on top, last thing of all. Take a deep breath in for me now, reaching really tall. Breathe it out and we'll let it all go. <sighs> Give it a good shake out. <sighs> Give yourself a round of applause, guys. Well done.